just a minute. Yeah. Okay. Thank you, Excellency. I wasn't expecting for her to call me here. But thank you so much, and thank you for giving us space for the young people on the table, and to Dr. Masha as well, and Dr. Medin from UNAIDS. Um, as young people, what I want to commit on behalf of the young people is that we are going to raise awareness, we are going to advocate, we are going to receive information and disseminate it fully to our fellow young people so that we are the ones on the ground who are championing against the triple threat. I think that's yeah, that's it. yeah that's that is it. Short and sweet like honey. <laughs> Asante San, I think that's very well put, very precise and achievable um, for the young people. So thank you, Shalene, and thank you for making time to come out to Homer Bay. Uh, Dr. Masha, uh, you are a honorary Homer Bayan. We are always happy to have you. Um, Dr. Medin, thank you so much. This is, you're coming back to Homer Bay. Last year we were together, Dr. Shaheen. Um, we are very, very happy to have you. Ms. Demanche uh, from IOM. Uh, all our partners, Dr. Tiso, who's uh, my former boss, um, she hired me at LVCT Health. I used to work for her. <laughs> and uh, when I was coming to be governor here, it just happened coincidentally that LVCT was the lead implementing partner for our CDC uh, programs, and that was a very, very good um, coincidence. So I welcome you once again to the Bay of Endless Potential. We had made a commitment to finish by 4 o'clock, Mr. Speaker, sir, and the entire assembly, Asante Sana. You, your assembly is always ready to put together our policy frameworks around these issues. And for that, we, we thank you. And I am happy that the leadership of the assembly um, is here um, uh, to support this cause. I see also our executive committee members uh, Rosalyn has spoken. Rosalyn is our CC for health. Uh, Asante Sana, she is the one who's been leading this process. Uh, thank you. Uh, CC for governance, um, Grace Masi Osewe. Um, I don't know if there's any other member of the county executive. Please. Yeah, the, the, the county CC for roads, Danish. When the men were told to stand, they were standing forcefully. <laughs> we are here. <laughs> uh, CC for Education, Mr. Pere. Our Chief Officers, please just rise. Uh, Chief Officer for Health, Dr. Suri. Chief Officer for Livestock, uh, Bernard Mwanda. Chief Officer for Communication, Atieno Tieno. The rest of the staff of Homa Bay, just wave. Um, thank you for hosting um, this wonderful uh, session and I once again welcome you to this Bay of Endless Potential. I know we are to finish by four o'clock, so it is our intention to finish in not so far from four o'clock. Um, uh, had I gotten the mic before four o'clock, we probably would have tried to finish by four, but I hope that uh, maybe 4.30 or thereabout, it would still be good time um, to drive back to Kisumu. And one of the commitments we are making is that in the very near future, while we have flights landing in Homer Bay, they are not daily, but in the very near future we commit that you will not have to endure the drive um, from Kisumu coming into Homer Bay. We are working towards daily flights landing uh, in Homer Bay so that when you're coming to Homer Bay, it's not a project that you have to plan until you do monitoring and evaluation. You just wake up and come to Homer Bay and and go back to, you come to Wilson, come to Homer Bay, go back to Nairobi through, through Wilson. So that is something that we are working on. And I also welcome you to this bay of endless potential. If you've ever wondered why Homer Bay, those there are the Homer Hills. And this here is the bay. So that is Homer Bay. That is how this uh, comes about. And, um, I, I welcome you to come back to holiday as well. We have the Ruma National Park. It has rhinos, buffaloes, giraffe. It's 25 minutes out of here, and you can see three of the big five. And if you move out, those who went to Tomboya, you saw that it's one of the most beautiful places. And you just, you didn't even go, you know, further on to Mpangano and Takawiri. We have white sand beaches uh, in Homer Bay. So for our guests, really consider Homer Bay uh, the next time you're, you're around. We went to Ndiwa, 
and I think uh, it was very eye-opening. And many times you assume many things, and you think you know things. Like for us who are always on the ground, you think you understand the issues, and sometimes you don't. Yeah, many times you don't. Why? Because Masha talked about privilege also, you know, to a large extent. You know, sometimes you, you have, you don't see it from the lens. And, and these girls, you know, told us their stories. And they said, look, me, I was in class eight, we went for sports, and I had nothing, and our home had nothing. And, 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 and so my friend, you know, told me, she had some money and asked her, how do you have money? And she said, I have, I have a boyfriend who gave me. And they went and she had other boys on the line whom she introduced. And she was the one who kept on saying, when this girl said, I have to go home, she said, no, just talk to the boy. You know, because she was bought juice for 30 bob. And the story was the same, you, you know, all around the room. And it was a one-nighter and she, they got pregnant and they're having children and that was the and to a large extent of some of their education. So the poverty story for me stuck and our role in poverty alleviation and we might not do whatever, everything. You know, we might not do, we might not eradicate poverty as is the story, not in our generation maybe, but if we do small things that lead families to have some income so that they can take care of their children, small needs, Mama, I'm going for sports, could I have a hundred bob? Small needs like those. And, and Shelly was talking about lotions and what have you, just small needs. And so for me, in my heart, I made a commitment that as governor of Homer Bay, I'm going to work double hard to ensure that our, the people of Homer Bay have money in their pockets because that might save, save one girl or two or three or four or five, whatever, who might have fallen into the trap. Then there was just the lack of information. We do our mentorship, we do it in high school. You're talking to 16-year-olds, 15-year-olds. These girls were 12, you know, maybe they're they in primary schools. The information must get out much earlier than we are, than we are doing. Uh, because once the, 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 the trap is earlier and they know nothing, absolutely, about the things they're being told about. And the peer pressure element. So there's, there's a lot that we learned today. But nonetheless, um, we have our hands full uh, this time because when HIV uh, came, you know, the battles were fought. But besides combating HIV, right now our communities are facing other equally devastating epidemics that threaten to do worse. The triple threat of new HIV infections, teenage pregnancies, and sexual and gender-based violence for which we are here today. Our job is cut out with numbers showing much more to be done as we race towards the set deadlines. In September last year, Homer Bay played host to CS uh, Susan Akumisha together with uh, CS Rebecca Miano and I think uh, uh, Dr. Shaheen, Dr. Medin, I think even uh, Dr. Masha, we were all here as we launched a rapid results initiative towards the Kenya plan to end AIDS in children by 2027. By joining forces, we pledge to make a significant impact by implementing various strategies to prevent HIV transmission among children. Under the theme, Wakati Nisasa, and AIDS in children. We affirmed our full commitment to this mission of safeguarding our children and ending the AIDS epidemic. This meeting thus should be one of the platforms for us to review our progress and to ascertain how much more ground we need to cover to achieve these pledges, both as leaders and as governments. With over 120,600 people in Homer Bay living with HIV, a prevalence of 15.2%, 1,240 new infections in the year 2023, and a mother-to-child infections rate at 5.3% against the Global Alliance target of below 5%, I graciously, graciously took the role of a lead ambassador for elimination of vertical transmission of HIV as well as an ambassador for the triple threat, and I have not shied away from participating in the conversation to sustain the gains made in, the, in this near epidemic control for HIV in Homer Bay County, even amidst the CDC-laid roadmap for self-reliance and trans transition of HIV response. Working with partners, especially UNICEF, we have moved in to address data discrepancies inaccuracy, inconsistency, and incompleteness 
generated in the current data management system, as well as systemic issues affecting the quality of prevention and elimination of mother-to-child transmission of HIV, syphilis, and hepatitis B reported from health facilities in the county. The quality PMTCT data that can be used for decision-making decision at all levels in the country and the impact of change on the triple elimination of vertical transmission of HIV, syphilis, hepatitis B in Kenya would mean improved accuracy in PMTCT data, enhanced monitoring and evaluation of PMTCT program, informed decision making for PMTCT interventions, optimized resource allocation for PMTCT, identification of gaps in PMTCT data reporting, increased accountability in PMTCT programs, and enhanced community engagement in PMTCT. Teenage pregnancy is another area of great concern, not only to me, but to all of us as leaders. I had uh, recently the president also saying that Kenya was also among, had among the highest uh, teenage pregnancies in the, in the continent and in the world. Now that, that is very disturbing. Uh, it's extremely disturbing. Um, we, the, with those, who, those with whom we were at Ndiwa, as I said in the morning before we left, every time you step into a facility within this county, you are 100% sure. The probability, if I remember my maths, the probability that you will get a, 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 an adolescent who has delivered or is pregnant, the probability is one. You are for sure certain you will get an adolescent between 10 and 19 years who is delivering at that facility. This is an epidemic. This is a serious matter. We are losing a generation. We are losing an entire generation of girls, and I don't know who is going to stand up after us to speak on some of these issues. Who are going to be the leaders? And we are treating it as if it's normal. And I think we must stop treating it as normal. And when somebody said, when, when, when we listened to the lack of information and just ignorance on these matters, the, a campaign to the magnitude of what we did to reverse HIV in this country is required on this issue of adolescent pregnancies so that we can avoid losing an entire generation. At a prevalence of 23%, 23%, you know and when we were in Diwa we were told 75% nearly of uh, CSS there are adolescents Homa Bay ranks sixth an indicator that we must we must reverse adolescent pregnancies pose, pose not only health risks to young girls but it, it is both psychological and physiological burden in the communities a higher risk of low birth weight babies, preterm babies, severe neonatal conditions like dis respiratory distress syndrome, and others. To combat teenage pregnancy, part of our program has been to organize both girls' and boys' mentorship camps as platform through which teenagers can be mentored and challenged to prioritize constructive decisions over what has the potential of cutting their career, uh, career dreams short. This month, earlier this year in March, we held a boys' mentorship camp. This month, we have a plan to hold a girls' mentorship camp, something we've done, I have done since 2014. We used to call it Mama County Says, and now we call it the Governor's Mentorship uh, Camp. And I would like to invite all our partners who are here to please partner with us in supporting this Governor's Mentorship uh, Camp as an opportunity as one of the small ways through which we can pass correct information to our people. So we'll be hosting this mentorship camp at Ratanga Girls in Diwa, and we are writing to our, I think we have written and we continue to write to our partners to seek support for this mentorship camp. And I thank our partners because they have worked with us this mentorship journey consistently over the years. Additionally, we have heightened advocacy and communication in the wards with high rate of with, in the wards that have high rate of teenage pregnancies and had a training of youth champions who are championing adolescent sexual and reproductive health in the community and other forums. 
reduction of teenage pregnancy from 32 this resulted in reduction from, of teenage pregnancy from 33 to 23%. We are also working closely with our community health promoters. You saw them in Tomboya, you saw them in Diwa, to pass these messages as candidly as possible within the communities. Last year, March, as part of our celebrations of the International Women's Day, we launched our county's sexual and gender-based violence policy framework, marking a crucial step in addressing this issue in our county. Since then, we have held community dialogues with stakeholders at grassroots, reaching over 3,000 people, while at the same time disseminating abridged copies and customized messaging to over 4,000 stakeholders across the county. Moreover, we have established safe spaces and rescue and hope centers for S SGBV survivors at Makongeni, Mbita, Rangwe, and the County Refer Referral Hospital. And this is in partnership with several of our partners, whom we thank immensely for their support. We are also working closely with the National Security Services and thank you uh, our County Commissioner for your partnership with us and the justice system to apprehend the perpetrators and seek justice for survivors. I think we already had the Ndewa story. In conclusion, it is my plea that this high level experiential learning visit to Homa Bay Uh, to Homer Bay will help us come up with unbeatable ideas on how we can achieve our targets and make this society and that of future generations safe, secure, and free of HIV and AIDS, early pregnancies and cases of violence of whichever form. I'd like to ask our partners, wherever you are, to look out for Homer Bay. Whatever programs that are there, we'd like to urge you to always be our ambassadors remember us and remember uh, Homer Bay. And to thank immensely all our partners who have made this possible and the organizing committee. And with this I say, may God bless Homer Bay, may God bless Kenya as we work together towards ending the triple threat. Asanteni sana and God bless you.